Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the studios at WCPO.com at Gilbert Avenue in downtown Cincinnati, along with Mike Cannon and Mr. Satton. This is the fifth mascot. How you doing, guys? Good. Dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, no matter who introduces the show, they all sound like Ken Brew, even if Ken's not here. Well, he's, he's, <laughs> he's here in our hearts. But... Oh, yes. Yeah, how you doing? Good. We got we got the Reds. They, they've come to uh, we've in the air, we've entered the, entered the era of young pitchers, rookie pitching staff. First time in I don't know ever that a team's had five rookie pitchers on the field uh, every five days, and so far this has gone pretty well. It's a very limited uh, sample pool. But uh, the pitching staff is hanging up, hanging in pretty good right now. What do you guys think? I, I don't know if it's the first time that this has ever happened, but I bet you if you look, if maybe like Stats Inc. or someone pulls the numbers of starts by rookie, rookie starting pitchers at the end of this year, that they're going to be up there with the most ever because you have, you're going to go the last two months of the season with five rookies in the rotation, and that's pretty remarkable. But yeah, I think the way they're pitching right now, uh, I think they have to, they're going to probably get Lorenzen out of that rotation. Yeah. He's, prob yeah. he's probably done starting at the major league level this year. They might put him in the bullpen, or they might send him down for, for a few starts in the minors before they shut him down because of his innings limit. But the other four guys have pretty much been lights out. And Lorenzen had his moments. He's had some starts where he was like, wow, this kid's going to be something special. Yeah, he was good at the beginning, but the last month he hasn't had a good start. He, I think hasn't, he, had, he hasn't had given up less than four or five runs in four or five innings. I think he might be running out of steam. You're talking about a guy who really only has about a year and a half of professional pitching under his belt, and he was a college closer. He wasn't even a starting pitcher in college. So I think he's just maybe running out of gas a little bit. But the other four guys have been really impressive and they all have live arms they're not they're not we're not talking about Jason Marquis up there they're just <laughs> well I guess you could say David Holmberg doesn't exactly have a live arm he throws about 89 and this it's, it's, it's was fastball hits but um, they're pitching really well yeah I think one thing too though you know the management starts probably thinking about you know innings right now and, and watching arms I mean you kind of have to throw that out the window right now I mean we do need arms and they're all young kids so you know, I think I think they're doing a good job of throwing them out there. I guess we'll see who who sort of survives. You know, at the end of the summer. Yeah, well, I mean, you got you got knocking on the door. You still have they're trying to turn Singrani back into a starter again. They can't make up their mind what they're going to do with him. You've got the two guys they got from the Royals in right. uh, Finnegan and uh, John Lamb, who are both pitching really well. I was just looking up Lamb's numbers since the trade. He's had two starts, six innings, four hits, one earned run in both of them. I think he walked like three guys in one of those starts, but that's pretty solid. That's great. Uh, the minor league year he's had this year, and you're talking about a guy who was once the number 18 prospect in all of baseball. He he could be up here. He could be up here as soon as uh, whenever Lorenzen's yeah, turn in the rotation is. I, I think they're itching to to try that out, you know. And now that they have nothing, you know, that's all they're doing now is trying things out because they can't get anything more. The the it's a small sample pool, and it's games that really don't matter, and everybody knows that. But it, it, it couldn't be more encouraging. Uh, they've sort of put everything they have into their pitching, and, you know, so far they seem to have some good young talent. Those but. are great numbers from Iglesias. Yeah. I mean, yeah, really, he's, 19 strikeouts, 18. I mean, he should be 3-0. <clears throat> they're he's all, they're all striking out about one an inning so August. far. So well, far. And, and but, but that's not something you need to focus on, but it's a good, uh, you know, attractive statistic. Well, it's it's a good barometer that they're they're not just getting by with luck, you know. I mean, right. um, you Make know, and, the, and the games don't matter for the Reds right now, but they matter for the teams they're playing. I watched two games mm -hmm. in the last two weeks. I saw them play the Pirates. I saw them play the Cardinals. Uh, and Holmberg just happened to pitch both of those games. I was the lucky winner who got David Holmberg uh, <laughs> in his 89-mile-per-hour fastball. But he looked spectacular in both those games. And you're talking about two teams that, that the games really do matter for them. They're, they're playing for something serious here. Uh, Pirates are playing to try to, one, catch the Cardinals, and two, make sure they hold on to that wild card spot. Cardinals don't want to lose their position. And they pitched pretty well. I mean, we're not talking about guys who are going out there and cleaning up against other teams like the Reds. They, they pitched, pitched impressively. Um, I saw Sampson make his major league debut in the bullpen, and I was actually about to leave the game. And then when they brought him in, I was like, well, let's just see, because I was Samson. like, the, you never know what's going to happen. And he was dominant in that one inning. I mean, it was really impressive to watch him go about his, go about his job. I think it's, I mean, it's interesting this, this year right now, because 
we've never really seen the Reds do this before. We've never we've we've always seen like the older guys kind of stick around, hang around, you know, dwindle, maybe put a couple big runs together at the end of the year. But now it's like turning over. It's something new for the fans. To be like, okay, we got these new guys, we got all these new pitchers. Let's let's throw them out the wall, see who sticks, <laughs> kind of give them all a chance. So I think. For the fan perspective, I mean, it's interesting to see all these guys and, and see these no-namers maybe turn into something special. So I, I, I do enjoy that aspect of it right now. I think, I think the fans are doing pretty well. They're used to, everybody sort of had a long time to get used to this, and they haven't totally bailed at the ballpark. And, you know, they seem to just be having fun thinking, well, you know, we, we don't really expect much in anything that happens. So far, that's what it seems like. You know, and I don't know if, it, if, if they go on a losing streak, but... You know, the, the fact that some players are out there having good games. And they have several players, veterans and rookies, who are doing well, but just as a team, they can't put it together. I don't know what that, you know. I, I, think, I think it's the problem that's plagued this team for the last two and a half seasons. Mm -hmm. They can never put a, a complete game together for a stretch of time. If it's one, one moment the bullpen's horrible and they can score some runs and the starting pitching is solid, but the bullpen blows <coughs> the game. And then the next week, the bullpen's fine, but now you can't score any runs. I right. mean, the last two weeks, they can't score any runs. The, the, the young pitchers in the starting rotation are doing, a, with the exception of Lorenzen, an outstanding job, and they can't score a run. I saw one stretch of time there, Votto got on base like 16 of 30 times and scored one run. That's terrible. I mean, that's yeah. crazy. you got a guy getting on base 16 of 30 times and he's scoring one run. No one around him is doing anything. It's, yeah. it's Yeah. I mean, you're seeing defense, too. I mean, like Billy Hamilton is, is looking like the best center fielder defensively ever right now, and he can't even get on base to, to up those, you know, to see him steal more bases. And, and that's just a shame, too. So you're seeing just a lot of holes. All yeah. over in our offense, where you know the defense is still looking pretty decent, but and man, yeah, it's, that's, it's we, tragedy. We showed asked. this stat at the top, and and while the pitching is very impressive, especially for the youth, the bat, the hitting in August, if that's not, uh, it couldn't be more uh, a graphic example. They're last in runs, they're last in batting average, and last in runs scored. And that's even they had a big game at once or two when they had that 11 run. They had six or seven the other day. But uh, it's it's sort of ridiculous, and, and when we talk about the the Reds moving forward, everything's gonna we're gonna be a youth movement, and there's a lot of good pitching, a lot of prospects there. You, you know more than anybody, Mike. You know more about our minor league system. The cupboard is bare there. I mean, yeah. there's nothing, you know. And even if like Cozart comes back, mm -hmm. I mean, he's you're never going to rely on him to do more than you know 260 or 270. I think you know he had a really good year before he got hit or hurt. But yeah, I, I think I, and the biggest problem I see with this team, it's not that they don't have talented offensive players because they have a lot of them. It's just that they're very inconsistent. And this is a team that does not know how to manufacture runs. And when you play great pitching, like you come in, you have to face Michael Walker with the Cardinals, you can't just sit back and wait for a mistake. You've mm -hmm. got to figure out a way to grind out runs and stay in the ball game. And this is not a team that's <laughs> built for that. It's not a team, Hamilton can't get on base. If Hamilton can get on base, yeah, that's then you can really. grind out runs. Yeah. You know, you, you've got a couple of great hitters, but they're also inconsistent hitters. You look at Jay Bruce, he's so up and down. When he's on a hot streak, you can ride the guy, but when he's not, it's a dead spot in the lineup because he's not going to be a guy who's going to grind out at bats. That's the biggest difference to me between the Cardinals and the Reds is the Cardinals grind out at bats, they work counts, they move runners over, they can bunt. This team is horrible at bunting. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, for, it's for the whole year. It's, it's like two years. It's comical. It is. I mean, you know, the other day, uh, I, f I can't. I can't. I was so annoyed, I can't even remember who it was. But he's up there, it was a sacrifice, he squares, and he can't get his bat on top of the ball. If you can't bunt and get your bat on top of the ball, so you, when you pop it straight up in the air and the catcher just turns around and catches it, that's somebody who doesn't have a clue. Right. And it You're wasn't getting like it paid was a, money to be there in those <clears> situations. <throat> and I remember, and, 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 my, and you know, Pee Wee Baseball see these kids do this stuff. So when you don't see these, you know, major leaguers do this, the, the simple little things. And I think a lot of that starts at the top too. I mean, you know, yeah. we've been talking about passion and, you know, going after runs and manufacturing runs. You, you, you have to go after them and make them. You can't just sit back on your heels and, and wait for runs across the plate. You they're, know? they're playing American League, old school American League yeah, style right. ball, sit back and wait for the three-run yeah. home run. I was at the game when they scored 15 runs, and it was a glorious, glorious thing. <laughs> but you, you, I mean, they, sco they, scored, as many, they of... scored as many runs in that one game as they have in the other four games I've been all year combined <clears throat> oh because 
you know, they, they were facing a pitcher, uh, I think it was actually Burnett, who was actually a solid pitcher, but he was having a horrible day. His mm -hmm. location was off. They had like, I don't know, four or five home runs in they that game. Four, they've scored, you know, 14 <coughs> runs like this month other than the one yeah. that they, they, they I gave up. I think he went on the disabled list after that. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So you can't yeah. count on that. You can't sit yeah. back and wait on the mistakes from, from a pitcher. You've got to figure out a way to score runs. And Matt, you know, your point, trying to find, you know, some more offense to plug into this lineup. Uh, Got to be happy with Suarez and the way he's playing. Yeah. You hope you get Cozart back. At the plate. Well, this is a guy who, who came up I as mean, with a reputation as good glove, no hit. So he, I right. think he and will I think be a, lot, a good a lot, defensive player. A lot player. of shortstops, when they come up, can't field very well. I, Barry Larkin was notorious for that, that when yeah. he came up, when I, when I was younger, he was coming up with Kurt Stillwell, and I wanted him to keep Kurt Stillwell because he was a better shortstop at the time. But people who were talent evaluators thought Larkin was the more long-term, and they did, obviously they didn't make a mistake. <laughs> at the time, though, I didn't want to, even though he was a hometown boy, I didn't want him to keep him. But, but they, still, they have some players who are offensively doing pretty well, and I don't know whether, do you think these guys, you know, we're talking two, three years away. It seems like we've all agreed that, you know, they're going to be uh, building for 2017 at the earliest, it would appear. These pitchers need at least a season to get under their belt. Do you think that these guys are both strong, they could be strong hitters on any team and contribute to a contender, but are they going to have help or do you think they're going to trade them and get other players? Are they going to trade pitchers? I mean, what are your thoughts on, on either one of those? Votto, I guess, that can, can null any trade. He has a no-trade clause. But these guys are really strong. They should be on a team that they're doing better, that's doing better. I think what they're going to do is they're going to try to package one or two of those young starting pitchers for a more veteran guy. Uh, they're going to look and see what they can do to retool that offense, and they're going to hope you get Mezzarocco back healthy. You, if you have a lineup with Mezzarocco, Frazier, and Votto, that's a heck of a starting point mm -hmm. for any team. You're talking about three guys who could bat in the 270 to 310, 320 range and hit 25 to 30 home runs, two righties and a lefty. You get Bruce to kind of just play the way Bruce has played after the first month and a half of this season, and you've got four talented, productive offensive pieces. The thing I like about Suarez is this team has been awful with the first two spots in the lineup. Suarez looks like the perfect number two hitter. Yeah. He puts the bat on the ball. He's consistent. He grinds out at bats. He can run a little bit. He can. He's a guy you can hit and run with. And now if they could just find a leadoff batter, which I don't think is Billy Hamilton, but uh, maybe in the offseason they take Billy Hamilton and they say, all right, no more batting lefty. You're batting righty right, the whole right. time. Uh, maybe, maybe say he's going to bat righty the whole time and you're going you're gonna, to um, platoon him with somebody. Yeah, no, why not? I mean, get, get another piece that, that can play center field and you platoon him with a, with a guy who can bat lefty and just say, all right, Billy, you're just batting righty. He, I think he could be successful as a right-handed only leadoff guy. His on-base percentage is very, very reasonable at batting right-handed only. But I, well, well, platoon seems like a nasty <clears throat> word, though. I, I, I don't. Do you think they would ever do that? I mean, I think they want to invest in him, and, and he, he just needs a hitting coach, I guess. I, I do have a question, though, with this no-trade clause with Votto. What, what's, what's in it for him to really stick around, though? I, I, I feel like his Cincinnati. best bet. I know, but I feel like his best. I think he could go to like the Yankees or some big, you know, major market team, get paid probably more. Right. And I think we could get more for him here. I feel like, you know, and I've seen in, in the last couple of years. I mean, I, I don't see him as a leader anymore. You know, that that sort of crown has been passed to Frazier. So I, you know, he's a quiet guy. You know, you want to. A lot of kids. I don't know if they want to root for him anymore. You know, he's solid. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the guy is solid. He's nails. But, I mean, as a leader, and you're going to pay all that money to a leader, right? You know, is, is it Votto? I just don't understand the note, you know, from his perspective, no trade clause. Well, I think it just gives him the power to do what he wants. I mean, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and he'll be a 5'10 guy. But um, 
he just I think he, they could I think with any cl clause like that they can go to him and ask and if the Reds stink yeah. for a couple of years they can go to him and say you know we'd like to trade you but he just has the power to say no I think he'd go crazy in New York uh, yeah I, I think that's yeah. the problem I, he doesn't want to go he, he, I, he gets annoyed with the reporters that talk to him here yeah. I, I think I, yeah. Cincinnati's, <laughs> Cincinnati's a place that's to a be good point. Point. he does I, I, I think Seattle, you're absolutely how about right Mike I, th I think that um, any team that could afford to take on the contract that Votto has which is an astronomical contract that the Reds are going to regret like crazy in about four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, any team that could afford to take that contract on is going to be too big of a market for Votto and he's not going to want to have to deal with three or four print outlets and four or five TV outlets regularly covering the team every day that's and, part and of the following game, his every move. I, I know, but I think that's... As a the, leader, that, you've got to deal with that I, stuff. I honestly think the only place that Votto would waive that no-trade clause for is Toronto. I think yeah. if, if there was a chance he would go to Toronto, yeah. and I've read an interview with, that where he's, he kind of hinted that like he actually didn't want that because there would be added pressure being the hometown boy and the hometown team. They got plenty of hitters we'll take for Votto. Well, there was that rumor <laughs> before Votto signed his big contract that it was going to be Votto for Jose Batista. Done. Um, I don't know. Maybe throw in a minor league hitter or two. <laughs> well, moving from what we hope to be in the future to a few years in the past when things were better, on this date in Reds history, actually yesterday, I think it was, August 12, 2010, Boo. one of the most remembered <laughs> things in recent history for <laughs> Reds fans, pitcher Johnny Cueto, who had kicked players with his spikes when he was pushed against the backstop during a brawl with the Cardinals, was suspended for seven games for his violent and aggressive actions. Manager Tony La Russa and Dusty Baker were also suspended two games with fines being handed out to the Red second baseman Brandon Phillips, pictured here with bad boy Yadier Molina, Boo. pitcher Russ Springer, Red, Red, Redbird backstop Dude. Yadier Molina, and right-hander Chris Carpenter. But this is something that every people, that's why he got booed at the All-Star game last week. Oh, yeah. You they know. all did. <laughs> yeah. All the but it, it, Molina that, more than anybody else. Yeah. yeah. They started it, yeah. Look at that. That well, was crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, that's that is still. First of all, that season was Karate a kick. great red season, <laughs> and uh, I felt like that that incident kind of gave the Reds even a little bit more fire, a little bit more passion. Yeah, that was the one time when they had enough uh, anger, you know, to deal with the Cardinals because you got to really bring it with them. They're obviously a tough team, and they they bring it. That's one of the things you were talking just about how they grind things out. They just play every pitch, every second when they're on the field you know, tougher and, and stronger than I think most teams. But that year after that fight, everybody was just so mad. And we had Johnny Gomes, who I think is pictured right there. <laughs> Johnny Gomes brings it every time he steps on the Didn't This, this really Love started it. because of a radio interview or something, I think, didn't it? Because Brandon said something about I mean, them being soft <clears throat> or yeah. Molina being soft. And then he came up to the plate the next day and hits him with his bat. Like, what's up, dude? Right on his shin guards. And yeah. Melinda said, no, <laughs> yeah. we're not doing that, dude. You know, yeah. and that's it exploded from there. Yeah, there's been, there's been a couple yeah. of those, those, uh, where it begins as a war of words with people making a comment about the Cardinals, and then it, it escalates. Yeah, and, but I think, if I remember correctly, the Cardinals swept the Reds in that series in Cincinnati. And then, and at that point, I was like, oh, it's done. The Reds are going to fall apart here. I've been waiting for it to happen because they had been yeah. so bad for, <laughs> for 11 years. And I was like, oh, they're, they're, they're over with. They're going to fall apart. They're going to fade. And then they went and run, won like five or six straight after being swept by the yeah. Cardinals. You know, for both teams, I think this is one of those things like for both teams where it was like, all right, let's take this to the next level. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I hate the Cardinals, Cardinals, but ever since that fight, I mean, the, the, have they lost a the game in the Central Division? I mean, they're, they're <laughs> tough. Man. It's like anytime you look around, it's yeah. like they got an eight-game lead on everyone. Right. And yeah. you know, this, it was Dusty year, right there. It was our buddy right there. Hanging yeah, out. I mean, it, even it, with all they've done, it's like this year they have a pact with the devil or something. You know I what think I mean? They do. No matter what happens, they're just coming up smelling ro smelling like roses, yeah. and uh, it's getting really, really irritating. That's right. Larue got hurt in that fight yeah, too. That, that ruined yeah. Larue's career. He got a ruined. concussion. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, it was like one concussion. Yeah. Many. Crazy, it was the final right. straw. Wow. Yeah, there's a slightly ch ch chubbier Joey Votto. He, yeah. He's thinned down just Man, like he looks good as his. He Joey looks has lost so much weight. He yeah. looks diesel. Him and Bruce, I at least respect the two of them because they got to the major leagues and they didn't get soft. They actually started, you know, working out working out and said, you know, I got to show up and I got to show up in top shape. But yeah. remember, uh, this is this is one, Scott Rowland, who, Rowland, who yeah. was sort of the anchor for the Reds for several years. He was, I don't know if it was a coincidence, but he came and 
that leadership that you sort of everybody wants, whether he provided it, it seemed like he did because he was older and he was a veteran and he had been on winning teams. And for that moment in time when he was on the team, they sort of were able to, you know, focus a little more. It seems like I don't know if that was a coincidence, but it's you know. And then he's gone, and now there's nobody who I think goes in there and just doesn't take crap from anybody in the dugout. That sounds like uh, Matt Latos, who's pitching against uh, <laughs> pitching against That's him tonight. Right. Is that exactly yeah. what he said? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Frazier. You know, we got Frazier's one of those guys you want to see him around here for a long time. You know, to talk about the old trade stuff, but. You know, he, he's he's I think our, our leader right now, and I, I think you know our world our World Series was the uh, home run. Yeah, know. but Frazier has struggled pretty bad after. Yeah, the he had a mammoth but, the other night though. Maybe he's back. I, we'll I, I wonder. Um, I wonder if that will affect uh, people in the home run derby because I know in the past, before the home run derby, people were talking about some of the some of the sluggers who refused to be in it, and mm. uh, they were they were talking about how like some past. Home run hitters that said, "No, I don't want to be in the home run derby because it'll mess mm. up my swing," and Frazier crushed the ball in the home run derby and then went on about a three-week slump yeah. there. So yeah. we're looking at a home run derby jinx. Maybe, maybe well, it's like the Madden know, jinx. All-star jinx back. though. He's Jack coming, Armstrong, remember he's, that? He's, <laughs> he's coming back though because he's, I think, second in the National League right now in home runs. He, he did have a dry spell. But uh, he's keeping up. I think it's uh, Harper in first place. But yeah. he's only one behind, so you can't, you know, you can't yeah. complain if a guy's one off the. As far as average, though, I'm wondering if, you know, this is the real Todd Frazier or the one that we saw before the All Star break. You know, I think the real Todd. Kind of I think the real Todd Frazier hits 270. I think, you know, I don't yeah. think he's ever going to be a, a guy like Votto, who, when he had his best year, hit over 300, hit 30 home runs. I don't think he's ever going to do that, or at least he might have one year when he does it. But I think he's a guy who his swing isn't disciplined enough. You That's know, he sort of I had wonder. that big looping swing. But he'll, he's I think, a power he, guy. Yeah, but he's a guy that I think you can always put in there and get those kind of stats from. I'm not, I mean, I mean I'll like take five or six of those guys, though. We get five or six no. guys hitting 270. No, yeah, right. well, and, and you need to compliment <laughs> him. If you got a guy like Frazier, Who's you know his his slugging percentage is huge because he gets a lot of doubles too, and you got somebody like uh, Hamilton who ever learned if he ever learns how to hit, you know, and Suarez maybe, you know, when you were talking about him, you know, uh, being in there. But I don't the, the Suarez thing. There's no place for him unless they get rid of Phillips or something. Mm -hmm. I I think that they're, they're going to look long and hard at who plays up the middle next year. Is it is it? Yeah. I mean, you don't know what how how strong Kozart's going to come That's back. That's true. That's the kind of the thing. The legs are where your where your foundation is as a hitter. Uh, mm -hmm. you, we, what we don't want is to go back to Kozart uh, hitting 215 up the middle and eight home runs and yeah. losing maybe a step off his off his break on the ball and he's a little bit slower and doesn't get to those balls. Um, but I think they're going to they're going to Suarez is forcing their hand. They're going to have to find a place to play him next year, second or shortstop, and. I don't know where that ends up being, but they're going they're to have to field. find a spot. <laughs> well, I, I, what's going to be really interesting, we were talking about this a little before the show started, is, is what they do with Adam Duvall. Uh, I think they're, they're trying him in left field down at AAA. He's the guy they got in the Mike Leak trade. He's got 29 home runs in the minors this year. He's got the most home runs wow. of any minor league player right now. Uh, he's not hitting for average since they brought him to Louisville. He's batting like 175, but mm. three of his seven hits are home runs. So, you know, you got to see can he help this team in left field, and do you I, think we'll see him? Do you think he, he get up? He gets I, th up here? I think September you'll see him unless yeah. they trade Marlon mm -hmm. Bird between now and then. Yeah, when I, they when they expand. I, th I think the only reason we don't we haven't seen him yet is because they want to get him playing time in left field. He's been a first baseman, uh, primarily a first baseman in the minor leagues, and obviously he's blocked there by Votto. Well, we mentioned it before. Our boy come. Uh, not we don't. He doesn't come to town. We go to L.A. But we get to see our boy uh, Matt Latos tonight. Uh, that'll always be fun. He's he's a uh, wild card, if you will. Loose cannon. I yeah. wish I wish it would have lined up for uh, Di Sclafani to pitch against uh, Latos and just see where they go. I mean, I still think I think we're looking at there's a pretty decent chance that those two guys are going to have pretty similar numbers at the end of this year. Uh, no, I agree. Di Sclafani is infinitely cheaper than Leto's. But uh, Samson has pitched really, really well. It's going to be, uh, it, hopefully he can continue it. I mean, his the, the problem with him and the minors was throwing strikes, and he's done a great job at throwing strikes. So maybe they fixed something mechanically with him down in the minors. Leto's, I always remember two things, was when he, uh, when Cueto got hurt in that one playoff game, and they took the shot of the dugout, and he's like, I'm ready. 
put me in now. <laughs> it's supposed to start the next day. But then, in the, and then I think it was the next year when we were playing the Phillies in, in, in that uh, game, or was it the Giants? When we, he blew the last game the of Giants. the series. Yeah. The Giants. And you looked at him and you're like, he's pissed. Get him out of there. And then they, they left him in and he gave up the Grand Slam. Grand and then slam. it was over. That was that terrible. He, he, <laughs> like, that, was, I was, I, that was one time when I was screaming, going, oh. get him out of there. You can tell he's not ready to throw this pitch. I was, I was I out in the West Coast, too, at an all San Francisco <laughs> bar. Seriously. <laughs> Red cap on, like we got this. We're gonna kill this. And all of a sudden, it was just like, oh no. Yeah. Just oh, I, from there. He just did not seem like God, he was ready for that. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone on the mound who got so like bent out of shape and then out of his game. Like, yeah. I mean, it would happen all the time. Even it's when like, he was uh, at his best, it would be like he didn't agree with a call with, from a couple of calls from the home plate yeah. umpire. Right. And next thing you know, he's like snapping at the ball when the catcher throws it back. And next thing you know, he throws a nice meatball right down the middle of the plate. <laughs> It's like that Carlos guy from uh, the Cubs a few years ago. Oh, he, Carlos Marmol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, he, you would see him, I don't know, probably every other start. He's got his glove in front of his face because you can tell he's, <laughs> he's screaming profanity into his glove. <laughs> okay, you can catch all of the fifth mascots on WCPO.com. You can catch them in short versions, long versions, but they're on there all the time. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Ken will be with us. This is it for the fifth mascot for This Week in Baseball.